a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Steve McNair Stephen Latrell McNair, nicknamed Air McNair, was an American football quarterback in the National Football League. He spent most of his career with the Houston, Tennessee Oilers, Titans and also played for the Baltimore Ravens. McNair played college football at Alcorn State in Lorman, Mississippi, where he won the 1994 Walter Payton Award as the top player in NCAA Division I AA. He was drafted in third overall by the NFL's Houston Oilers in 1995, becoming the team's regular starting quarterback in 1997, their first season in Tennessee and remained the starting quarterback for the Titans through 2005. After the 2005 season, McNair was traded to the Baltimore Ravens, with whom he played for two seasons before retiring after 13 NFL seasons. McNair led the Titans to the playoffs four times and the Ravens once, and played in Super Bowl 34 with the Titans. McNair was selected to the Pro Bowl three times, and was an All-Pro and Co-MVP in 2003. All as a Titan, on July 4, 2009, McNair was fatally shot by his mistress, Sahil Kazemi, in a murder-suicide. Early Life McNair was born in a small tin-roofed house in Mount Olive, Mississippi and attended Mount Olive High School as a freshman in the fall of 1987, where he played football, baseball, and basketball in addition to running track. As a junior, McNair led the Mount Olive Pirates to the state championship. McNair also played free safety in high school, and in 1990 alone, he intercepted 15 passes raising his career total to 30, which tied the mark established by Terrell Buckley. At Pascagoula High School, an All-State selection, McNair was named an All-American by Super Prep magazine. The Seattle Mariners drafted him in the 35th round of the 1991 MLB Amateur Draft. College Career McNair was initially offered a full scholarship to the University of Florida to play running back, but wanting to play quarterback, McNair chose Alcorn State University, a historically black university which competes in the NCAA's Division I AA Southwestern Athletic Conference. In 1992, McNair threw for 3,541 yards and 29 touchdowns, and ran in for 10 more scores. The Braves fashioned a record of 7-4 including a last-second victory in the rematch with Grambling. In the contest, McNair returned from an injury and helped Alcorn State, trailing late in the final period, move deep into Tigers' territory. Then, despite a leg injury, he tucked the ball under his arm and dove into the end zone for the winning touchdown. The victory over Grambling helped the Braves qualify for the IAA playoffs where they faced off against then Northeast Louisiana, falling 78-27 to the Indians on November 21, 1992. McNair helped Alcorn State to another good year in 1993, as the Braves upped their record 2-8-3 while McNair threw for more than 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns. He was also named first-team All-Swack for the third year in a row. In his senior season, McNair gained 6,281 combined yards rushing and passing, along with 56 touchdowns. In the process, he surpassed more than a dozen records, and was named an All-American. In addition, McNair won the Walter Payton Award as the top IAA player, and finished third in the Heisman Trophy voting behind Rashan Salam and Kijana Carter. McNair set career records for the Football Championship Series with 14,496 passing yards, as well as the division record for total offensive yards with 16,823 career yards. The records still stand. 
He was a member of the fraternity Omega Sci Fi, highlighting his allegiance by tattooing Omega Man on his arm. Class Wikitable. Pipe exclamation mark. Year. Team. G. CMP. At. PCT. YDs. Long. YDs. At. TD. Rush. Gain. Rate. 1991. Alcorn State. 10. 189. 338. 55.9. 2895. 8.57. 24. 57. 242. 1992, Alcorn State, 11, 231, 419, 55.1, 3541, 8.45, 29, 92. 516, 1993, Alcorn State, 11, 204, 3197, 22, 107, 633. 1994, Alcorn State, 11, 356, 612, 58.2, 5377, 8.79, 47, 128, 904. Pipe Pipe Question Mark Pipe Houston, Tennessee Oilers, Titans with the third overall pick in the 1995 NFL Draft, the Houston Oilers and new head coach Jeff Fisher selected McNair, making him, at the time, the highest drafted African-American quarterback in NFL history and signing him to a seven-year contract. McNair did not see his first action until the last two series of the fourth quarter in a November game versus the Cleveland Browns. Late in the season, he also appeared briefly against the Detroit Lions and New York Jets. In 1996, McNair remained a backup to Chris Chandler until starting a game on December 8 in Week 15 against the Jacksonville Jaguars. McNair's first season as the Eulers starter in 1997 resulted in an 8-8 record for the team which played its home games at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. McNair's 2,665 passing yards were the most for the Oilers in a season since Warren Moon in 1993, and his 13 interceptions were the fewest for a single season in franchise history. He also led the team in rushing touchdowns with eight and ranked second behind running back Eddie George with 674 yards on the ground, the third highest total for a quarterback in NFL history. In 1998, McNair set career passing highs with 492 attempts, 289 completions, 3,228 yards and 15 touchdowns. For the Oilers, now competing in Nashville, he also cut his interceptions to 10, helping his quarterback rating climb to 80.1. The team officially changed its name from Oilers to Titans for the 1999 season as they debuted a new stadium, Adelphia Coliseum. Early in the 1999 season, McNair was diagnosed with an inflamed disc following Tennessee's 36-35 win over the Cincinnati Bengals and needed surgery. In his stead entered Neil O'Donnell, a veteran who had guided the Pittsburgh Steelers to the Super Bowl four years earlier. Over the next five games, O'Donnell led the Titans to a 4-1 record. McNair returned against the St. Louis Rams, and with McNair starting, Tennessee won seven of its last nine games, good for a record of 13-3 and second place in the AFC Central. Tennessee opened the playoffs, at home against the Buffalo Bills in a wild card game, winning on the Music City Miracle, and eventually advancing to Super Bowl 34 in a rematch with the Rams. On the final play of the game, a McNair pass to Kevin Dyson was complete, but Dyson was unable to break the plane of the goal line, giving the Rams the win. McNair signed a new six-year contract after the 1999 season worth $47 million. 
Following a 13-3 season in 2000 which ended in a playoff loss to the Baltimore Ravens, the 28-year-old McNair put together his most productive year as a pro in 2001. In 2001, McNair registered career passing highs in yards, completions, touchdowns, and quarterback rating. He was also the team's most effective rusher, tying George for the club lead with five scores. Named to the Pro Bowl for the first time, McNair sat out the game due to a shoulder injury. In 2002, Tennessee finished the regular season 11-5 and reached the playoffs. In the divisional playoff contest against the Pittsburgh Steelers, McNair threw for a career postseason high 338 yards and two touchdowns, with two interceptions, while rushing for 29 yards and another score on the ground. The game had a controversial finish when, after missing a game-winning field goal at the end of regulation time, and a second failed kick in overtime was negated, because of a controversial running into the kicker penalty on Pittsburgh's Dwayne Washington. Kicker Joe Nedney won the game from 26 yards out 215 into overtime. Steelers coach Bill Cowher said that he called a timeout before the winning kick took place. McNair and the Titans reached the AFC Championship game, but were unable to reach the Super Bowl, losing to the Oakland Raiders 41-24. Between the 2002 and 2003 seasons, McNair was arrested for DUI and illegal gun possession. His blood alcohol was above 0.10, and a 9mm handgun had been sitting in the front of the car. All charges related to the incident were later dropped. In December of the 2003 season, an injured calf and ankle kept McNair on the sidelines for two games, though he still finished with the best numbers of his career, including 3,215 passing yards, 24 touchdown passes, just seven interceptions, and a quarterback rating of 100.4. The Titans ended at 12-4, the same record as the Colts, but Indianapolis took the AFC South Division Championship. By virtue of its two victories over Tennessee, McNair and Colts quarterback Peyton Manning were named co-NFL MVPs following the 2003 season, which ended the Titans' season in a playoff loss to the New England Patriots. McNair finished the 2003 season as the league leader in passer rating, and became the youngest player in NFL history to pass for 20,000 yards and run for 3,000 yards. McNair missed the 2004 season's fourth game with a bruised sternum, an injury suffered the previous week against Jacksonville, and played in only five more games that season. In 2005, he played in 14 games, because of a back injury. This series of season-ending injuries prompted the Titans to make the business decision of locking McNair out of team headquarters in the 2006 offseason. The team would not let him rehab in its building, because it feared an injury would force the franchise to pay him $23.46 million. The Players' Associations filed a grievance on his behalf, for which an arbitrator ruled that the team violated its contract, opening the possibility for a trade. Baltimore Ravens Following the 2005 season, on April 30, 2006, the Titans allowed McNair and his agent, James Buss Cook, to speak with the Ravens to try to work out a deal. On May 1, 2006, the Baltimore Sun reported that the Baltimore Ravens might wait for McNair to be released by the Titans during free agency. Citation needed. Date February 2009. Speculation was that the Titans might hold on to McNair until the week before training camp in late July if the Ravens didn't come up with a satisfactory trade offer for McNair according to a league source. However, on June 7, 2006, the two teams worked out a deal to send McNair to the Ravens. 
for a fourth-round pick in the 2007 NFL Draft. On June 8, McNair flew to Baltimore, passed a physical, and was announced as the newest member of the Ravens. The 2006 season saw McNair start each game for the Ravens, missing only portions of two games. In the Week 14 game against the Kansas City Chiefs, McNair threw the longest regular season touchdown pass in the Ravens' history, when he threw an 89-yard touchdown pass to receiver Mark Clayton, McNair helped Baltimore to a 13-3 record and an AFC North championship. McNair started at quarterback in his first playoff game as a Raven when his team faced the Colts on January 13, 2007. McNair was 18 of 29 for 173 yards with no touchdowns and two interceptions, as the Ravens lost 15-6. On May 9, 2007 McNair was a passenger in a car that was pulled over for suspicion of drunk driving. Both the driver of the vehicle, his brother-in-law, and McNair were arrested for driving under the influence. Under Tennessee law, one can still be arrested for DUI even as a passenger in one's own car and the driver is believed to be under the influence. McNair owned the pickup truck involved and was charged with DUI by consent. The charges were dropped on July 10, 2007. In 2007, McNair did not play in Week 2 against the Jets which the Ravens won 2013. He also did not play the full game in Week 3, however, the game was won by the Ravens, 26-23. McNair missed nine more games during the rest of the season, including getting pulled after taking many hits from Steelers linebacker James Harrison in Week 9, and fumbling the ball twice. McNair only started six games for the Ravens in 2007. After 13 seasons in the NFL, McNair announced his retirement from professional football in April 2008. In July 2012, McNair was named the 35th greatest quarterback of the NFL's post-merger era, according to Football Nation. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?